In this Shopify tutorial for beginners, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to build a professional Shopify store from complete scratch. So let's not waste any time and get started. First thing we're going to do is get us an extended trial for Shopify. So go to the description of this video and click on the first link you find there. This will take you to my Commerce Coach signup page where you'll get an additional three months of using Shopify for only $1 per month. Simply type in your email and click on start free trial. Then here, we're just gonna skip all these questions. And then if you already know the name of your store, you can just type it in here and click on next. Or if you're not sure yet, just click on skip. Then choose your country and click on next. Here we wanna create our Shopify ID. So choose one of these four options to create your account. I'm simply gonna continue with my email. Then choose a password and create your Shopify ID. That will take us into the dashboard of our new Shopify store. So let's start by choosing a store theme. On the left side menu, click on online store and then on themes. Currently the default theme of Shopify is the Dawn theme, which is not bad, but for this store, I'm actually gonna choose a different one. So let's scroll down and click on visit theme store. Here you can check out different themes that you can install on your Shopify store. In this video, I'm gonna build my store using a free theme. And the one I'm gonna choose is the refresh theme. So let's click on it and then click on try theme, which will add it to our theme library. To activate it for our store, we need to click on publish and confirm. And now we can see that the current theme has changed from the default one to the new one we have just added. Now we can go ahead and click on customize to start designing our store. Here's where we can edit all of our store pages like our home page, product pages, collection pages, and so on. You can also look at how your store looks like on different devices and screen sizes by clicking on the desktop icon on the top right and choosing mobile phone, for example. However, we're going to edit our store on the desktop view. On the left side, you can see the structure of your current homepage. It always starts with the header at the top and ends with the footer at the bottom. And in between is the content of the page, which consists of multiple sections. As we can see, Shopify has already added some sections for us, acting as placeholder content. We can also rearrange these sections by dragging them up or down. And we can delete sections by simply selecting them and then clicking on the trash icon here or at the bottom of the section menu. If we want to add something new, we can simply click on add section and choose what kind of content we would like to add. Now, before customizing our homepage, let's delete all the preloaded sections to just get a better overview of what we actually have on our homepage. For some reason, we're not able to delete the email signup section, so let's click on the eye icon, which will make it invisible so that we're just left with the header and the footer, which will be displayed on every page on your store. So now let's start adding content to our homepage. We're gonna start by adding a logo to our header. So we're gonna select our header, and then on the right side menu under logo, let's click on theme settings. This will take us into the theme settings where, by the way, we can also get to by just clicking on the paintbrush icon here on the left. Let's click on select image and then upload our logo. Click on select. And then here we can also adjust the size of our logo. Now let's go back to the sections overview and then hover over and click on the announcement bar. Here we can change the announcement text for the top of the website. This is a good place to put promotional messages like giving a discount code or simply putting something like free shipping worldwide. Of course, you can also remove the announcement bar altogether by just deleting the entire text. Now we can move on to the hero section of the homepage, which is the first thing that people will see when they visit our store. So let's click on add section. And then we have a couple of options for creating the first part of the homepage. I recommend you either start with an image with text section, an image banner, or a slideshow, depending on what type and how many images you have that you can use as content. As I don't really have many images for this example store, I'm gonna keep things simple and go with an image with text section. 
Then here, we're just gonna go from top to bottom to customize the content. First, let's click on select image. And then here you can upload your main image. As I don't really have any custom images made for this store, I'm just gonna click on free images and then choose one that would be appropriate for the store that I'm building. For the image height, I'm gonna choose medium. I'm gonna change the desktop image width to large. Then I'm gonna switch the place of the text and the image by selecting image second. Put the desktop content position to middle. I leave the desktop content alignment on left. Change the content layout to overlap and change the color scheme to background two. Then let's click on the text and add a title. I'm simply gonna put the name of the store and change the heading size to small. Then let's also click on the paragraph below and add a short description. Now, if you need more space for the text, you can change the desktop image width to medium and you can also go into the theme settings, go to typography and reduce the font size scale to 100%. Now I'm also gonna select a button and change the text to shop now. And then we need to add a button link which determines where people will get to when they click on this button. I'm gonna send them to collections, all collections. Awesome, the first part of our homepage is now finished. Now would be a good time to save what we've done so far. So let's click on save on the top right. The next section I'm gonna add to my homepage is a collection list. So I'm gonna click on add section and choose collection list. This will be an overview of the different product collections that we have on our store. But as we haven't added any products or collections to our store so far, this section currently doesn't show anything. So what we're gonna do now is add a few products to our store. So we're going to right click on the exit button on the top left and then click on open link in a new tab. This will take us back to the Shopify dashboard. Here we wanna to go to the left side menu and click on products. Now, if you don't know yet what kind of products you wanna sell on your Shopify store, then I recommend to watch my Shopify dropshipping tutorial, which includes a guide on how to find products to sell. For those of you who already have a product, let's click on add your products. And then here, we're gonna add our first product by giving it a name and also a short description. Then under media, we're gonna add our product photos and choose the one we want as the main image. Then enter the price of the product and also the available quantity we have in stock under the inventory section. Now, if you want, you can also go through the rest of these options here and put in more information about your product. Also, if you have variants like different sizes or colors, make sure to set them up here under variants. Then let's click on save and go back to our product list. If you wanna add more products, then just click on add product at the top right and go through the same process again. Once we've added all of our products, we can now also create collections to organize the different types of products that we sell. So on the left side menu, let's click on collections. Here we're first gonna delete the homepage collection that was already set up by default. Just select it, go to the three dots and click on delete collection. Then let's click on create collection. Now, as my example store in this video is selling different types of headphones, I'm gonna create a collection for earbuds. Under collection type, I'm gonna choose manual because I'm gonna be manually adding the products later. Then on the right side, we also wanna add a cover image for this collection. And then we can hit save. Now we can repeat the same process until we've set up all of our different collections. Once that's done, we can go back to the products and assign them to the collections that we have just created. So to do that efficiently, we just tick the ones that we want to add to a specific collection, then go to the three dots, click on add collections, and then choose the collections we want to add to these products to. And do that for all of your products. When that's done, let's go back to our editor that we still have open in the other tab. And now here for the collection list, we can select the collection that we want to show on our homepage. So I'm gonna choose earbuds for the first one, headphones for the second one, and then for the third one, I'm gonna choose sport. Then I'm also gonna change the collection list title and change the heading size to small. And that's it for our collection list. 
Now we can add a couple more sections to build out our homepage even further. For example, we could add a rich text section and then just add some text talking about our brand. Or we could add a featured collection and then maybe choose the best sellers collection to feature the best selling products directly on the homepage. We could also just feature one specific product by choosing the featured product section and then selecting the product that we want to show. Feel free to play around with all these different sections that you have available and see for yourself which works the best for the type of online store that you want to create. We're now going to move on to the footer of our website. Here we want to add some links of our store policies like our refund policy, terms of service and so on. So first we're going to go back to our Shopify dashboard. Then click on settings on the bottom left and then go to policies. Here we can simply generate our policies using the Shopify templates. All we need to do is click on create from template for each policy that we need. However, keep in mind that these are just templates, so you should go through them and edit them according to your own information. Then we also want to add our shipping policy and our contact information. And then click save. Great, so now we're done setting up our policies. The next step is to add them to our footer menu. So let's close this window and then go to online store, navigation, footer menu. Here we can add and remove links on our footer menu. So I'm going to first delete the search function. Then I'm going to click on add menu item, go to policies. And here we can add each of the policies that we have just created. Then click on save menu. Now we can go back to our editor, scroll all the way down and we should be able to see our policies in the footer menu. Then I'm just going to delete the about section. And for the text block, I'm going to change this to contact us and add the contact information. Then here I'm going to simply add the brand logo once again. And that's it for the website footer. Now we're almost done with our homepage. The only thing that we haven't looked at yet is the main menu on the top, which is the main way customers will navigate through the online store. So to edit this menu, we're going to have to go back to the Shopify dashboard, go to online store, navigation, and then click on main menu. And just like we've edited our footer menu before, here we can add and delete links on our main menu. I'm going to first delete the home and the catalog link. Then for this store, I'm going to add some links to different collections that we've created before, like bestsellers, earbuds, headphones, and so on. Once that's saved, we can go back to our editor, save and reload the page. And now we can see our new main menu on the top. Awesome. What we're going to look at next are the theme settings, which control the overall style of the website. So let's click on the brush icon to get to the theme settings. Here's where we can match the design of our new store with our brand colors and fonts. So under colors, we can adjust the primary and the secondary colors, and these changes will be applied across the entire website. Same thing with typography. Here we can just play around with different fonts for our website. Then here under logo, we also want to add our browser icon, also called favicon. So for the favicon, I'm going to upload a square version of my logo. This will then be visible at the top of the browser window for anyone who visits the store. Then let's go to social media and add all of our social media links. These will then be visible in the footer at the bottom of the website. And that's all we're going to do for the theme settings. Now we want to take a look at the product page of the store. So let's go up here and switch to our product page. Just like we've seen on the home page, Shopify has already added multiple sections to this page as well. So what we want to do here is just go through these sections and fill them with our own content, just like we've done on the home page. Or if you want to get rid of a specific part, we just hit the trash icon. And we want to go through the same process for the collection page, the collection list page and the contact page. Now specifically for the contact page, we want to go back to the Shopify dashboard, go to online store, pages, click on the contact page. And here we can add some text asking people to fill in the form for any questions. Then hit save. And now when we go back to the editor, we can see the text right here. And we can also adjust the padding on the right side menu. 
If you want to add more pages to your store, simply go to your Shopify dashboard, go to online store, pages, and then click on add page on the top right. Here we can name the page and add the content and then hit save. We can now also add this page to the main menu by going to navigation, main menu, add menu item, and then go to the pages and choose the new page. Great, now let's go back to the editor and also take a look at the mobile version of our store. So go to the top right and change from desktop view to mobile view. Everything should be already optimized for mobile so we don't really need to adjust anything here. But for some sections and blocks you have the option to edit the mobile layout specifically. So go through all of the pages on mobile and see if there's something you want to change. Perfect, we're getting closer to finishing our new store. We just need to go over a couple more settings and then we'll be ready to launch. So let's go back to our Shopify dashboard, then go to online store and then preferences. Here we want to add our store name and also a short description so that people can easily find our store on Google. Then we're going to scroll down to password protection. This is where we need to disable the password protection so that people can actually visit our new store. However, we can only disable our password once we've chosen a Shopify plan. So let's click on pick a plan. I'm going to go with the basic plan allowing me to use Shopify for an additional 3 months for only $1 per month. So just go through these steps here, add an address, add a payment method and then click on start plan. So now that our plan is active, we can go back to online store, preferences, then scroll down and untick the password protection. Then once we click save, our store will be live and people can actually visit our website. However, there are still a few things we need to do in the backend store settings. So let's go to the bottom left and click on settings. Under store details, we want to make sure to enter our store name and also make sure the store currency and the units are displayed correctly. Next, we're going to set up payments so that our customers can actually check out using different payment methods. So to set up Shopify payments, just click on complete account setup and fill out the forms truthfully so that you can actually get paid. Once that's done, customers will be able to check out using their credit card or through other options like Apple Pay or Google Pay. By default, customers will also be able to check out using PayPal. If you don't want to have PayPal checkout on your store, make sure to deactivate PayPal Express checkout here. Now let's go to shipping and delivery. Then under shipping, let's click on manage. Here is where we can decide on how much we want to charge for shipping our products. We can define different shipping rates for different shipping zones. Currently there are two shipping zones already set up by default. Domestic shipping, which is inside of the US and then international shipping to other countries. I'm going to make it easy for this store and just set up one shipping zone only for the United States and it will be free shipping. So let's delete the existing shipping zones and then create a new shipping zone. I'm going to name it United States and then choose United States here and click done. Then click add rate, choose the shipping time and then I'm going to leave the shipping price at zero and click done. Of course, you can also add more rates and more shipping zones for your store depending on how you want to charge for shipping. Next, let's go to domains. Currently, the URL of our store is still a myshopify.com domain, which looks pretty unprofessional. So we want to make sure to get this store on our own branded domain. We can either connect our existing domain or we can simply buy a new domain through Shopify, which will then be automatically connected to our store. Great, now we have gone through the most important settings. Before we send people to our store, we want to make sure everything works perfectly. So let's go back to our dashboard and then click on the little eye icon next to online store. This will open up a preview of our website where we can test the customer experience all the way to the checkout page to make sure everything works. And if it does, congratulations, your new store is ready to launch. Watch this video next if you want to learn how to use TikTok ads to get your first sales on your new Shopify store. 
Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks for watching.